Hey, hey, greetings and salutations, all you fabulous Facebook users out there. This is your old pal Brad in the marketing department at Utah's Hogel Zoo. Now, we have a very exciting virtual field trip for you planned. So, mom and dad, gather the kids around, open the window, shout for the neighbor kids to join you, get grandpa off the couch and grandma out of the kitchen because you're not going to want to miss this. Here we go. Um, before we get started, as I see some comments start to roll in, we love those comments. We even love your questions more, so I'll be looking for those. Even if you have a birthday, love to give you a shout out about that. And of course, you see there a donation button. Boy, we sure would appreciate your support. It goes a long way with us, especially while we're closed. So any amount would really help us. There's also some other opportunities to give to the zoo located on our website, uh, Animal Art Illustrations. Of course, a membership is a great way to support the zoo. So go there, check it out. And uh, we're gonna be uh, starting right now. We've got some special guests we're gonna introduce. Now, where are we? Where are we, you're wondering? Well, this is definitely a behind the scenes look at the zoo. We're at the far end of the boardwalk at the basement of Discovery Theater, if you know where that is. So let's go in and meet our special guests who will describe what you guys are gonna see today. Ah, here we go. Guaranteed, many of you, if not all of you, have never been in this space before at the zoo. I'd like to introduce one of my favorite people at the zoo, Haley Parkinson. Hey, Haley, how are you? What are we going to be doing today? Well, today I thought we could give everyone a little bit of a behind the scenes glimpse because here at the zoo, we all wear a lot of different hats. So I thought today we could put on the chef's hat. Oh, one for you. nice. One for me. Here we go. Uh huh. So, should we get started? Lovely, yeah, get started. Awesome. It looks delish. Look at all this stuff, gang. Yeah, it's a really big, diets are a really big part of the zoo. We have hundreds of animals here, and each one of them has a really specific diet that's been picked out for them by Dr. Nancy, who's our nutritionist. Here yes. Here, our head vet. Um, and she puts together all the recipes. I've got my uh, recipe cards for the two we're making today. Ah. You guys can actually see behind me, we've got this beautiful fort. This is everything everyone in this building needs to eat and how often they need to eat it. We, us humans, like to eat every single day, but some animals only eat on um, on certain days of the week and some have special treats they get certain times and not on others. So this helps the keepers keep track of it because here at the zoo, it's a lot of work that goes into animal diet. For, uh, you know, put on their chef's hat and prepare those diets for our animals. So uh, Haley, these yeah. are all the animals that are here, uh, our ambassador animals, right? Mm -hmm. That are housed here in here in, in the in the Creekside area, and these yeah. are their daily diets, folks. Mm -hmm. You can see how uh, how detailed those diets are for every one of these animals. I didn't write this board. My handwriting's not nearly that good. <laughs> right, mine either. Uh, all right. So, some of them, a lot of animals can share diets. The salad we'll make later today is really good for a lot of different animals, but a lot of them have. Uh, so I wanted to highlight a very unique diet for our armadillo Pablo. So today we'll be making Pablo's perfect parfait. And that starts off with this all these up we call it our uh, mix. And this is, I wish you guys, uh, I wish we'd figured out how to get smell through Facebook Live. Oh. This is quite an interesting one. This is a lovely mix of a wet dog food. Uh, sauteed horse meat and crumbled hard-boiled eggs. Mm. Uh, you, of course, we leave the shell on for that nice little crunch, right? Nice. Mm, you gotta get that. That's some good stuff right there. Uh, so what we've measured out, and what I've done here is I've measured out 100 grams of that. Thank you, Steve and Stacy. Appreciate that. So we've measured out 100 grams of that, and we'll start with that. 
we're gonna get, like I said, a parfait going. So we're gonna get some nice little layers going on. So we'll get just the first layer of that. All right, now we are gonna see some animals later on, folks. So, so hang in there. Yeah, then we're gonna have uh, Pablo the armadillo and Cupid the leopard tortoise be our celebrity judges. They're gonna nice. judge and see how well we made our food here at the end. So, oh, we'll see. They, they can be pretty tough judges. All right, so we're gonna start with that. We'll leave it aside for a second. Now, Pablo is an armadillo, and they are omnivores. Now, there's three kind of categories of animals we like to talk about, and maybe you guys already know about some of them. So tell me if you already know, if you know the difference between an herbivore and a carnivore. Herbivore or a carnivore, folks? We'll swing back around to that in a minute. Yeah. If you want to hit, I brought some skulls with me here today. Uh, now, these are some replica skulls of a snow leopard, which is a carnivore, and a rabbit, which is a herbivore. And I wonder if you guys know the differences. Send them in to me, and Brad will let me know if you guys are letting me know what those differences are. Okay. Pablo is a different kind of animal, and he's what we call an omnivore. Now, we're omnivores too. If you look at your own teeth, you know, we've got big teeth in the front right. uh, for chomping off food. We've got kind of sharper teeth for when we're eating meat. And all the way in the backs of our mouth, uh, we've, oh. got, we've got the big flat teeth. <laughs> nice, Haley. Uh, we've got big flat teeth all the way in the back of our mouth for uh, grinding up food. So Addy, age six, says that carnivores eat meat and herbivores eat plants. Great work, Addy. That's amazing. <laughs> How smart. So does Josie, says the same thing. Excellent. Yeah, excellent, we you guys. We have a smart group of followers. We sure do. Today. Well, so that means we've got the meats here. Next, we're going to work on the fruits and vegetables, the plants. And omnivores eat both. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. So that's what we're going to make. Nice, gang. We're going to make a nice omnivore parfait with layers of meat and of fruits and vegetables. But Paolo's an especially special kind of omnivore, and his adaptations, he's got different teeth than a lot of omnivores have. This is an armadillo skull. Look at that. Um, and you can see here, he's got really peg-like teeth. He doesn't have those teeth for grinding in the back. And in the front, he doesn't have any teeth at all. Now, those are special adaptations to help him eat his favorite food. You guys can see if you can guess what his favorite food is. We'll add that very last to the parfait because um, he's a special type of omnivore called an insectivore. So if an insectivore, oh, that gives you a hint. There's a hint what the armadillo's favorite food is. So we'll circle back around that to a minute once we've got some guesses in. But because he doesn't have those chomping teeth in the front, our incisors are what you and I might use if we wanted to take a bite right out of the carrot. But since Pablo doesn't have those, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to chop up some food for him. Okay. Now, before I get chopping, I'm gonna put on my nice safety gloves here. Haley is the best, Angelina. Thanks for the shout out. And I failed to mention that she's part of our fabulous education team at the zoo. So thank you for that. Insects, says Tori Miller. Ooh, and Tori. Landon, age nine, he came up with that. Thank you, Landon. Nice work, Landon. Yeah, Insects, says Valerie, age seven. Wow, you're nice. so smart. So yeah, we'll, at the very end, we're gonna top off this parfait. The perfect topper to the perfect parfait is some nice little bugs. So we'll add those last. First, we're going to add some vegetables. So what I've got here today is I've got sweet potato, I've got some carrots, and I've got some broccoli today for Mr. Pablo. We're going to chop those up right now. I'm not being too careful with it. I've measured these all out. All together, it's going to be about 40 grams of vegetables. I'm going to add those into our food processor here. Just going to get some nice sizes that the food processor doesn't have to work too hard. Now keep in mind folks, this is what our keepers do every day in preparing diets for not just the animals at Creekside, but throughout the zoo. It's a lot of effort and a lot of time, and you just don't get a chance to see a lot of this taking place. Right, it's a lot of behind the scenes work, and it's something that a lot of people don't think of. Like, you know you have to eat every day, but you know, it's uh, a lot of, what does it kind of affect We're gonna be making full diets for two animals, and some snacks for two other animals today. Thank you, everybody, for your donations. So generous of you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. So much. Also, happy birthday to Courtney and Jasmine. Happy birthday! Now, Katie wants to know what kind of insects can they expect to see on top? Ooh, we have got a whole container of millworms here. So we'll get those out 
in a minute. Mealworms, okay. Now, because Pablo is specially adapted for eating those bugs, he's got that long skinny snout, he's got those peg-like teeth in the back. He actually also has uh, you know, long sticky tongue and big old claws to help get the insects out of the ground, things like ants and termites. Um, so because of that mouth, we're going to chop things up really small for him. We've got those incisors, he needs a little bit of help. So we've got our food processor here. And we're going to blend those all up. It's going to get a little bit loud here. Okay. Sorry. Now we're just looking to make sure not a single piece of this is more than about an eighth of an inch. I bet some of you all have food processors at your house. Yeah, we use a lot Very of stuff. similar here, gang. All right, I think that's looking like a pretty good. There we go, nice produce puree. Right Look there at that. For our omnivore friends. Now, uh, mom and dad, on our website, hogelzoo.org, you can go to the education section and actually download and print an activity sheet that the kids can then fill out either during or following all of our Facebook Lives. That's new, so go to that and check it out. We'll be posting a link to that later also on the Facebook page. Look, so look for a link it. later, yes. All right, Brad, maybe I'll have you bring everyone in close and get some nice layers going. Okay, well, here we go. All right, so we've got that meat layer. Now we're just going to add a nice little fruit and veggie layer. Hi to Bean and Annie. Thanks for joining us. Hey, be sure you guys let us know where you're uh, commenting from. We always like to give a shout out to different places around the state and the country. This is for our armadillo, Pablo, if you missed it. We're just making him a nice little... Looks like animal. salsa verde, says Rena. <laughs> <laughs> a little, a little bit. bit, yeah. I don't usually put dog food in the salsa verde. No, but... no. Hold the dog food. <laughs> yes. All sorts of different animals like eating different things. I heard you guys, yeah. Can you hear us okay? We're trying to practice some social distancing, so we're doing the best we can. Oh, yeah. Oh, and somebody just wants a shout out for a birthday. Uh, who was that? It was Olive, who will be nine on April 23rd. Happy upcoming birthday, Olive. Oh, and it's. Uh, it's uh, Ashley and Jacob's mom's Sharon's birthday, too. Oh, happy birthday, Sharon. Bear Lake, thanks for joining us. Watching from Alaska, Alaska. Tillamook, Oregon, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, Tooele, Nevada, thank you, Brooke. Oh, you guys are from all over. Oregon, Payson. Hi, everybody. Yeah, All right. In Wyoming here, and there's also a question. I don't know if this is a pretty big Thanks, question. Thanks, Bean. All right. They're curious how much money we spend on food. Hi to Addy. Per year. Ooh, that whole is year. a big question. Thank you, Pammy. Good deal. I'm glad everybody's being able to hear okay. Brett, do you have any idea on that? What was the question? Someone's curious how much money we spend for the whole year on food for the animals. Uh, That's a pretty big question. You know, it's a, it's a good question, and I'm not exactly sure I can tell you this, though. It costs between forty and $45,000 per day to operate the zoo. That includes animal food, salaries for staff, maintenance requirements, you know, utilities. It's not inexpensive. All the more reason why your donations and other contributions to the zoo are so important to what we do. Absolutely. Thank you. I really like that second bullet point about uh, um, employees getting paid. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. Oh, that. Oh, that. Okay, here we go. Oh, Ooh, we got some nice okay. mealworms in there. They're wiggly and squiggly. You see the mealworms squiggling? That's not me jerking the camera. That is, <laughs> those are live mealworms. Mm. We're going to pick right. out some really good ones. Now, we mentioned that Pablo's a picky judge of food, so we're going to look for the best mealworms in there. That's a good one. We mentioned that it, the animals here at the zoo, we feed them the best quality food, because that having that high level care is really important to us as an Thank you, Lucy. Two. Here's number three. Ooh, he didn't want to go in there. 
uh, four, and let's find a good last one. There we go, number six. Um, in fact, I okay. meant to mention earlier, but uh, all of this produce that we're using is actually grocery quality produce. So just like you guys, your mom goes and picks out the best food from the store, we make sure we get the very best quality food for our animals. Too. Now you literally counted out those mealworms. Yeah. It's important they get the right number. Exactly. Right? It's, right quantity yeah, of mealworms? It's important that everyone gets the right amount of food. Uh, just like, you know, we watch our food intake and make sure we're getting a nice variety. A really important part of the animal diets is that variety and also um, that they're getting the right quantity of food. Uh, the other stuff that we use, the produce and also the, the meat mix, uh, that was also measured very specifically to go along with the recommendations of our vet and nutritionalists. Very good point. Yes, excellent. Right. I believe we okay. have crafted and created <laughs> the perfect parfait, but that's not for me to say, of course. I think it's time to meet one of our celebrity judges. What do you guys think? Okay, here we go. And yes, Marcy, you did hear a guinea pig. Yes. You, you are very pig. astute. Nice we do have guinea pigs in here. All right. McKinley and Madison, hi. Okay, look who we got here. This is my friend Pablo, and we'll give him his food and see what he thinks. This is Pablo, everybody. Say hi, Pablo, <laughs> to your adoring audience. All right, let's pass on the first round. Now, Pablo is a three-banded armadillo. And the three-banded armadillos are the only kind of armadillos that can curl up completely into a ball. I'm, I'm getting dizzy watching Pablo. Right? He'll do that to you. Uh, armadillos can move surprisingly fast. Uh, and they Hi, Hannah. has basically two speeds, not moving at all or top speed. He loves to run around. So we make sure that he gets <laughs> lots of exercise and lots of enrichment. Now, of course, this kiddie pool isn't where he normally lives. This is a, a new and interesting thing for him. And sometimes when you're in a new and interesting place, you can be so excited wow. that you don't even want to eat food. Of I course. I know a lot of you guys, I see kids at the zoo sometimes, and you're so excited to be here at the zoo that you don't even want to stop for months, right? He, he is so loud right now, too, with He's his very little feet. Loud, yes. Renna says he looks like a wind-up toy. <laughs> 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 he, is, he is very cute, Terry. You are right. Now, what we're hearing is those really, those, uh, really big front claws that he's got. Um, and those are tapping against the plastic here. This is part of our animal care team. This is Autumn. Ladies and she's gentlemen, it's Autumn. Out of nowhere, <laughs> she just pops right in. We love Autumn. Now, we see that Pablo's diet. Someone's curious what uh, his favorite treat would be. Do you have a special treat you give them, or does he really just love his diet? His, his food he loves he his diet. I would definitely say mealworms are the the most desired, but he, as uh, Haley was saying, really enjoys running around, so that's kind of his favorite treat. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, he also, once he calms down a little bit, really enjoys his mealworms. Those are always the ones that are gone in the morning. They are just fascinating animals, these armadillos. <laughs> They really are. Not yeah. native to Utah, but nope. right? They're found in Texas, Mexico. These ones are South America. And this so one, three we have our, is the nine banded? That's what in North America. Yeah, and this nine. little guy is native to South America, folks. I know a lot of you have asked uh, mm -hmm. where he's from. So, so South America for Pablo. The nine banded is the one that you'd find around in Texas, so that uh, Americans are a little bit more familiar with. And they're a little larger than the nine banded, a little just a little bit larger. Yeah. More of these bands on the back, so you can see the one, two, three bands there right. on the back of the armadillo. Very good point. Um, the nine banded Thank you, also Wendy. don't have the ability to curl up into a ball, which we probably won't be seeing from Pablo here. But they can curl completely up into a ball, and sometimes they leave a little gap. They're pretty tricky animals, and they're really, really good at snapping that shell closed on, uh, you know, fingers or paws or claws of animals oh, that might it, yeah. want to uh, get into the. It's the such a underside. fascinating defensive mechanism Absolutely. that armadillos have. They can literally, guys, roll into a ball, and uh, that's how they protect themselves from predators. The only with that kind of a shell. Right. Having trouble following him around, so I'm just trying to zoom out so everyone doesn't get too dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> He's so cute when he Well, runs. maybe we'll leave him here and 
leave Pablo over here for a little bit and get started on our next diet. And we'll see if he calms. Oh, there he goes. He's starting for it. Yeah. Oh, we'll see if he oh, calms down a little yeah. bit enough to be able to enjoy that food. We'll come back to Pablo. Okay, what else we got? What are we doing right. now, Haley? Our second diet of the day is going to be um, a very tricky one. But before we get to that, I have a special treat for you guys. Something that we hardly ever do. It took years of training to prepare this diet, okay? So, we gotta have it loosen up. We're gonna uh, take a quick break and put together a diet for Mickey, our kookaburra. Mickey, so, the yeah. kookaburra. All right, so they are carnivores. They eat meat. In the wild, they eat a lot of snakes, but here at the zoo, they eat mice. So we have lots and lots of oh, mice. Oh dear. And to prepare a diet for a kookaburra, we're going to take a mouse. Okay, here we go. There it is. And you're going to give it to him. Yeah. Okay, it's done. Okay. <laughs> a lot of prep for that <laughs> diet. Just throw it on a dish and he's good to go. Exactly. So hey. some animals um, are a little bit trickier to prep for than us. We'll leave that on the silver platter nice. for our friend Mickey a little bit later today. Um, and we'll get started on a little bit more of a complicated diet. <laughs> Pablo is just, wow. Uh, top speed, that's what, he loves running around in circles and he likes going top speed. So this is, this can, is a play time for Pablo. Can everyone hear okay with Pablo running around? Yeah. <laughs> Please let us know if, um, I'll try to use my best, uh, theater projecting voice, but, uh, let us know if you can't hear too well. Sounds like a tap dancer to me, so I'm okay. <laughs> Okay. Oh, fantastic. I've got everything here, so I'm making sure I've got the right amount. That's what I said, Allison. Nice. We're going to start off with some kale. Now, we, leafy greens like this are really high in calcium, so they're going to be really important for tortoises because they need calcium for building up that shell of theirs as well as their bones. Now, that's why we drink lots of milk, right? To make sure our bones stay nice and strong. Right. So broccoli, kale, leafy greens like that are also really good for that. So make sure he's got five grams here of kale. We're gonna chop it up for him nice and neat. Now, calcium is really important for that shell growth and for bone growth as well. Uh, something really cool about the shell of a tortoise, and I have one here for us to look at today, um, is that a lot of people don't realize Oh, look at this. this. So here's the shell of a desert tortoise, very similar to the leopard tortoise. They actually fill the same niche because they have this very similar uh, ecosystem to here in the south of Utah, as a leopard tortoise does in Africa. And what I really like to point out about the shell is here on the inside, you can see that it's made out of these bony plates. So that's where all that calcium from that hail is going into to build these bony plates. On this outside that we're looking at is scoots. That's made out of keratin. It's a lot like your fingernails. And the plates are misaligned from each other to make it nice and strong. And then this right here is really interesting. That's actually the spine of the tortoise. Look so at that. Sometimes I have people ask, like, can a tortoise leave their shell, like something like a snail can or a hermit crab? Right. And they can't. It's they cannot. Their, it's part of their skeleton. You bet. Hey, um, where else can you see the underside of a tortoise shell but at Hogle Zoo, gang? Right. Really fascinating. Our, this is one of our bio facts. So I love bio facts like this because they let us look inside animals and things like the skulls that we looked at earlier. We can learn so much about animals by looking at how they're made up and their internal structures. Now, now, Haley, before I forget to mention this, what you're doing today with this diet prep and the biofacts is something that once we reopen, Absolutely. people can see here upstairs at Discovery Theater, yeah. performed by our uh, wonderful Haley and everybody else on our education team. So check our website for the days and times that we'll be doing these in our, in our beautiful new theater. Yeah, wonderful. We as well as um, dandelion, which is a great treat for them. It's really important. You guys asked about what Pablo's favorite Thank you, food is. Sadie. It's really important for us to know what every animal's favorite food is so we can use treats for uh, helping with training and just, you know, yeah. make it to help them feel happy. I know treats are a really important part of making me feel happy. So. They're an important part of making me happy, that's for sure. <laughs> We've got all the greens in here. Um, and we talked 
talk about, these guys are definitely herbivores, so they have adaptations for eating plants. Um, I wanted to know, and this was my question for you guys, they, uh, leopard tortoises have adaptations for eating plants, especially long grasses. So I've got some pellets that have those grains in them for them. I've been soaking them because the last thing you want is a dry salad. But if we're thinking about all the adaptations that a desert tortoise has to live in their environment, and that a, an armadillo has to live where he lives and eat what he eats. I have a question for you guys, and this is your challenge. I want you to imagine your favorite food, and I want you to think of what kind of adaptations you would have if you were specially adapted to eat that food. So I really like ice cream, so maybe if I had ice cream eating adaptations, I'd have hands that were spoons, or I'd never get brain freezes, right? So think of your favorite food and comment and tell us how you could be adapted to specifically eat that one food. People are loving Pablo, just oh, yeah. so you know. <laughs> I also love Pablo. He's an amazing ambassador animal. All right, the last step here is we're going to mix all this up nice and well. Now, the most important part of a salad mixing is the pizzazz, right? So we've got to mix that all up, and I think it's going to be ready for our friend Cupid. Cupid, our uh, leopard tortoise, yes, exactly. right? That's We're making a diet for uh, our leopard tortoise, folks. Some of you have asked. We'll put that on there. we got a nice little sprinkling of pellets. Kind of okay. like croutons. I love croutons on my side. Okay. All right. We'll see if... Yeah. Cupid's a little shy as well, but we'll see if, if he goes for it. Now, leopard tortoises are actually... <laughs> A this is Cupid. That may take a while for him to get there. If we... <laughs> Pablo, he's checking things out. His motor's stuck. He's got a little traffic jam there. There you go. Now, leopard tortoises are named, of course, for this beautiful pattern beautiful on their shell. shell. A lot like a leopard's spots. But their diets are really different. A leopard is a carnivore, and a tortoise is an herbivore, so they have very different adaptations. Right? And that's kind of what we, we thought, think about that a lot at the zoo is what our animals are adapted for and we make sure we're giving them access to those things. So uh, Cupid's adapted to uh, eating fruit, uh, things like, you know, cactus and leaves and we provide him with those things. Seems like he's being a little shy with all of us crowding around him too. Yeah, maybe we can give him a little <laughs> space there. Now, this is actually pretty interesting looking at Cupid. But the leopard tortoise is actually the fourth largest species of tortoise in the entire world. And the second largest species that you'll find in their native continent of Africa. Now I know that's hard to believe looking at our small friend here. Uh, he is actually only four years old. So he's still on the small side. A lot of animals are getting close to full grown at four years old. But leopard tortoises like this can live 50 to 100 years. Wow. And they'll keep growing pretty much their whole lives. It seems like he's pretty interested in Pablo as well. Incredible. Yeah. Is that what's going on over there? I'm not sure about this. Well, very good. All right. Well, we'll make sure these guys get their diets. Um, we'll get that mouse to Mickey a little bit later today when it's time for him to eat. But I'd like to thank you guys so much for joining us. It means so much to have you with us here at the zoo today, even though you couldn't be today. Yeah, well, that's terrific. And my thanks to the lovely Autumn and Haley. Thanks for uh, joining us, everybody. I hope you learned a little bit about the, uh, what it takes to, uh, to put together these diets for our animals and how intricate they are and how we always lean toward doing what's right for them to keep our animals healthy and safe. want to thank you all for tuning in. Just a little tease for tomorrow. We're going to be up in African Savannah. So do you like zebras? Do I hear anybody out there who likes zebras? Tune in. You're going to see some zebras tomorrow, maybe some other animals on our savanna. So until then, don't forget to always be a champion for wildlife. Be safe. Take care. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.